Look, all I'm saying is that from experience, my experience with drafting UCF quarterbacks is uh, interesting, to say the least. I love Wake Bortles. I'm not going to pretend that he was any good, but by God, I love the man. Welcome, everybody, to JG9 News, where we talk all things NFL all the time. I'm Jared Garrett, and I represent the 904 from the 602. And today, we are talking NFL draft. We are talking this team behind me right here, the Seattle Seahawks, because they are making a top 30 visit with one of the quarterbacks that is projected to go at some point in this draft, and if not during this draft, a very high priority free agent, a quarterback from UCF by the name of John Rice Plumley. This according to a report from Pete Nakos of On3 Sports. He says, The Seattle Seahawks are bringing former UCF and Ole Miss quarterback John Rice Plumley in for a top 30 visit, a source tells On3 Sports. He's been working with Jeff Christensen in anticipation of next week's Big 12 Pro Day. So the Seattle Seahawks definitely showing some interest in the UCF man. Last season with the Knights, he had 2,586 yards, 14 touchdowns, 8 picks, 505 rushing yards and five touchdowns. He played two seasons with UCF, 29 touchdowns, 16 picks, but had 16 rushing touchdowns along with about 1,400 rushing yards. He played his first three seasons at Ole Miss before playing the final two at UCF. His final stats across Division I, 34 touchdowns, 19 interceptions, but over 2,500 rushing yards and 28 rushing touchdowns. So definitely a dual threat quarterback that the Seahawks are interested in. Now, obviously, the Seahawks have two quarterbacks on their roster right now. Geno Smith is going to the season as a starter, just like he was last season and just like he was the year before. And the backup quarterback, it is no longer Drew Locke. He left the team in free agency. The new quarterback backing him up is Sam Howell, who they acquired in that trade from the Washington Commanders about a week ago. Now, we don't have a good idea of how Mike McDonald builds his team, the new head coach in Seattle, replacing Pete Carroll. He just got there, sample size is zero, so he could go either way. Having said that, we do have an idea of how John Schneider, the GM, since 2010, builds his team. And what's interesting about how he constructs his team is that it's basically a given that the Seahawks will only keep two quarterbacks on their roster. This is not like the Pittsburgh Steelers with Mike Tomlin, where they always keep three. The Seahawks keep two, and they're pretty consistent with that. Last season, the initial 53-man roster consisted of Geno Smith and Drew Locke. Same thing in 2022 with Smith and Locke. In 2021, they kept three quarterbacks, Russell Wilson, Geno Smith, Sean Mannion. But in 2020, they only kept two, Russ and Geno. 2019, same thing, Russ and Geno. 2018, two quarterbacks, Russ and Brett Hundley, the guy they acquired from the Green Bay Packers. 2017, they kept two quarterbacks, Russell Wilson and Austin Davis. 2016, they kept two quarterbacks, Wilson and Boykin, the TCU man. 2015, 2014, 2013, they kept two on the initial 53, Wilson and Tavares Jackson. And then 2012, they kept two quarterbacks on the initial 53, and that was Russell Wilson and Matt Flynn. So if you're doing the math at home, the last 12 seasons, the Seahawks have only kept two quarterbacks 11 out of 12 years, with 2021 being the exception to the rule. Having said that, they just gave John Rice Plumley a top 30 visit. And for those who don't know a top 30 visit, it's a bit of a misname. It does not mean that they view him as one of the top 30 players on their draft board. It does not mean they have a first round grade on him. It just means a private individual visit with any player that does not go to a local school. So Seattle can have as many people they want from the University of Washington come in. That doesn't count against them. But if they want to have an individual one-on-one -on -one meeting with someone at their facility... That is a top 30 visit, and you're only allowed 30 of those. Now, what's interesting about this, again, we know that the Seahawks like only keeping two quarterbacks on the roster. What we also know is that John Rice Plumley, based on the draft projections, based on his middling numbers in college, all things considered, based on all that, he's not projected to go super high in this draft, if at all. We're looking at a guy that's going around six, round seven, maybe round five at the earliest according to most of the mock drafts. About half the mock drafts I've looked at, half the projections have him going late on day three, and about half the projections have him going as an undrafted free agent. He'll be on a roster somewhere, or he'll be on some 90-man roster, but whether he gets drafted is an interesting question. But what's interesting is that John Schneider, the GM, he says that the Seahawks do not draft need-based in round six and seven. They only draft guys that could make the roster. Look at what John Schneider said the other day, about 
drafting and his strategy in the later rounds. The question was, if the best player available on your board is a position that you're pretty strong at, what do you do? And he said, really, you don't go need until you're toward the end of the draft. And he gives precedent of why that is the case. Several years ago, we drafted three running backs. Well, we drafted Zach Brooks, the last running back. He was our highest rated player. So we went based on talent. We didn't go based on need. We went best available player. Well, we ended up taking the best players in the seventh round, and that created a logjam. At that point, we were like, you know what? That's probably not a great idea. At that point, sixth round or seventh round, let's go with need and what your numbers look like at different positions based on what the draft has looked like so far. But that goes first round, second round, third round, fourth round, fifth round. So basically, what John Janetter is saying as the GM is that he's going to draft the best available player on his board for the first five rounds. But once he gets around six or seven, it's not really in his best interest to draft based on talent because it creates a logjam at certain positions that you don't need to create. And on top of that, those guys really have no chance at making the roster. So if we're just doing some deductive reasoning here, John Schneider says he's not drafting based on talent in round six and seven. He's drafting based on need. He's only drafting you if you think you can make the 53-man roster. But what we also know is that 11 of the last 12 seasons, the Seahawks have kept only two quarterbacks on the roster. And that's how he likes to build the team. So... That doesn't seem to make a lot of sense for John Rice Plumley to be making his top 30 visit with the team if the Seahawks are only keeping two quarterbacks as is precedent, and if the GM admits that they're not taking a guy based on talent in round six or seven, they're going to look at the need. Even if Rice Plumley is the best player on their board by that point, they're probably not going to take him. So what does this mean in all this? Well, my guess is that the Seahawks aren't looking at drafting him necessarily, unless they want to grossly overdraft for a guy that is projected to go round six or seven by a lot of people, and they take him round five. But if they don't take him in round five, I would not think that the Seahawks draft Plumley in round six or seven. My guess is they're doing their due diligence to try and get a high-priority undrafted free agent and give him a contract that way. My guess is that if he doesn't get drafted, the Seahawks will make an offer to make him a high-priority undrafted free agent Make him a number three quarterback, and even though he won't make the roster, he'll have a spot locked up on the practice squad. Now, will he take that? I'm not sure. It depends on the money, but he's got no chance of making the roster barring an injury if precedent is anything to go off of, because obviously Geno Smith and Sam Howell, barring an injury, are going to be the two quarterbacks on the Seahawks on the 53-man roster, and the only two quarterbacks to make the roster. Having said that, if the Seahawks sign him as a high-priority undrafted free agent, he should have a pretty comfortable spot on the practice squad, barring anything crazy. Plus, on top of that, Geno Smith, yes, he's got another year on his contract in 2025, but Geno Smith, it's a $38.5 million cap hit in 2025, and it's $13.5 million in dead cap, which is still a lot of dead cap, but you're saving $25 million if you cut Geno Smith. So if the Seahawks decide, you know what, Geno Smith was not very good in 2024, we like what Sam Howell can do. He's going to be the starter. There's no point in keeping a backup quarterback that's costing you $40 million in cap it. Let's get rid of Geno, and let's make Plumley the number two. So this could be a long-term thing for John Rice Plumley if he goes to the Seattle Seahawks as an undrafted free agent. Again, I don't think they're drafting him. I don't think he would make the roster even as an undrafted free agent, but if he plays well in the practice squad, doesn't get poached, looks good, he could be the number two quarterback in Seattle in 2025 based on how things go. But I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens in about a month when the NFL draft commences in Detroit. What we do know, though, the Seahawks have interest in John Rice Plumley in some capacity. Probably not as a draft pick, just because of what John Schneider said about drafting guys for need, not based on talent, and we know what the Seahawks precedent is, but as an undrafted free agent that you can use as a scout team quarterback when you're playing a team with a mobile quarterback, considering the fact that he is a mobile guy. He ran for 50-plus yards in six out of the 10 games he played last season. Considering all that, I could see the fit there as an undrafted free agent, but I wouldn't look too much into this in terms of whether the Seahawks would draft him or not, because it is more likely than not, unless they're keeping three quarterbacks this year, unless Mike McDonald said, I want three quarterbacks, it's more likely than not that he would not make the roster if he gets drafted by Seattle. But what are your thoughts on this? Do you think John Rice Funley will be a good player in the NFL? Do you think that he'll be a good fit in Seattle? Do you like the move? Do you not like the move? Where do you think he winds up? Do you think he gets drafted? Do you think he doesn't get drafted? Do you want your team to get John Rice Plumley? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And that's going to do for this episode of JG9 News. Be sure you like and subscribe. It helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out my main channel, Jabber Gear 9 where we talk all things NFL history all the time. Until next time, this is Jared Gear 9 signing off. And as always, 
Go Jags.